Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Dear viewers, I greet you all and I welcome you into our episode of The Benefits. We've been, or we stopped at the last episode with the story of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu and his virtues. Ibn al-Qayyim said that he is the second in Islam, that means after the Prophet, and in giving his soul and his property and everything for Islam. Ten persons who are given the glad tidings of paradise were converted by him. I remember among them Uthman, Talha, Zubair, Abdul Rahman ibn Awf, Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas. Those are the pillars of the Islamic structure. And those became Muslims by him. He became Muslim while he had 40,000 dirhams. He spent it all while he needed more than anything else. He spent it at the moment where Islam needed it. That's why it fruited that the Prophet said, there is no money that ever benefited me ever better than the money of Abu Bakr. Abu Bakr is better than the believer of the people of Pharaoh. There was a believer who used to hide his faith and belief. But Abu Bakr did not hide his faith and belief. Although he was the first one to declare Islam after the Prophet, peace be with him. And he's better than the believer of the people of Yasin. Because that person strove one hour. And Abu Bakr strove all of his life until the moment he died. Verses and narrations expressed his virtue. And all the companions, they agreed upon him to be the successor after the Prophet, peace be with him. The, lo the hearts loved him. Who used to be the companion with the, with the Prophet when the Prophet was in his youth? until he died. Who was the proceeder in faith among companions? Who was the first one that prayed with him? Who was the first one or the last one that prayed, the, the Prophet prayed with him? Who is the companion of the Prophet that died with him in his grief? We loved him not because of a matter of desire. But we say about him what Ali, the cousin of the Prophet, said about him. The Prophet accepted you for our religion. That means to be the one to lead the prayer at the lifetime of the Prophet before he died and after that. So Umar Ali said, the Prophet selected you for our religion, that means our prayer. Shouldn't, be, shouldn't we be pleased with you for our life? That means to be the leader for us, to be the successor of the Prophet. So he was the successor of the Prophet in two things, in leading the prayer and in leading the nation itself politically. This is Abu Bakr, the companion of the Prophet, peace be with him. When the Prophet said, let Abu Bakr lead the prayer. Aisha said, O Prophet of Allah, Abu Bakr cries too much when he performed the prayer. So people cannot really comprehend what he's reciting. The Prophet said, I say, let Abu Bakr lead the prayer. And when a woman came to the Prophet, Asking about something, she said, If I don't find you, to whom I should be going? Al-Bukhari made a comment on that. He said that she meant the death of the Prophet. That means if you died, whom I should be going to? He said, go to Abu Bakr. And also before he died, he said to Aisha, 
bring me a pen and a paper that I should be writing a will lest somebody wishes something and says that it belongs to me he's talking about the leadership it belongs to me I deserve it and Allah and the believers insist but it should be Abu Bakr it should be Abu Bakr it should be Abu Bakr to be strict it doesn't need for you to be harsh Abu Bakr was so soft but despite his softness he was so strict even he was regarded and noticed to be even more strict than Umar ibn Khattab Umar ibn Khattab was known to be very solid and very harsh but Abu Bakr was not so but Abu Bakr was more strict than even Umar radiallahu anhu when Umar said to Abu Bakr are you going to fight those people those people yes they don't want to pay the charity but uh, are you going to fight them they say la ilaha illallah Abu Bakr reminded Umar that among the conditions of la ilaha illallah is that they should be giving the alms and the charity and all people believed that Abu Bakr was right on that he was the he is the one that collected the Quran the Quran was written but not to be collected he was collected by the Prophet but not collected on one book Abu Bakr did this it takes long time to count the virtues and the greatness of this companion of the Prophet peace be with him let us ask Allah the Almighty that he grant us his greatest favor that we see those companions at the day of judgment in paradise and that we be with them they consider to be the greatest honorable people and I say they are the best people in history the history did not experience those kinds of people they are the best among all my kind but not better than the prophets the prophets before them but they are the best people after the prophets Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu <clears throat> was proceeding in faith proceeding in faith proceeding in donation and giving alms <coughs> Umar was competing with him Umar once brought half of his property give it for the sake of Islam and the Prophet said to him Umar what did you leave for your family he said I left for them half of my wealth and property then afterwards came Abu Bakr and the Prophet asking the same question what did you leave for your family he said I left for them Allah and his messenger and when some rumors went bad against the daughter of Aisha radiallahu anha and some good Muslims they were involved in this they involved themselves in this and Abu Bakr used to be giving them a monthly salary of donation but Abu Bakr got angry that he gives them the money and they speak against his daughter he said wallahi I will not give the, give him my donation anymore then Allah the Almighty said in his glorious Quran let those who have wealth and property stop not from giving those poor people of believers let them pardon and forgive don't you want don't you wish to be pardoned this verse was revealed to the Prophet peace be with him on the occasion of this incident and on the honor of Abu Bakr that was an invitation of forgiveness and pardoning from Allah if Abu Bakr forgives and pardons his uh, that companion whose name was Mustah ibn Uthatha or Athatha when this verse was revealed to the Prophet peace be with him and Abu Bakr heard it what do you expect Abu Bakr to do what do you expect the reaction and the impression of Abu Bakr to be Abu Bakr cried and he said yes I wish 
that Allah forgives me my sins. So imagine, first he said, Wallahi, I will not give him my donation. Then after he received that verse, he said the opposite thing. He said, Wallahi, I will not stop my donation to him until I die. As an honor to that verse that was revealed from Allah to him. Abu Bakr used to do the same thing that the Prophet was doing during his leadership to this ummah. He did not, despite his busyness, in order to reunite the whole peninsula, he did not forget to visit Umm Ayman. Who is Umm Ayman? An old woman, companion, whom, you, whom the Prophet used to visit. Then Abu Bakr said to Umar, Oh Umar, we would like to visit Umm Ayman as the Prophet used to visit her. Abu Bakr did not stop anything that the Prophet was doing when he was alive. Even this kind of visit for this old woman. They went to Umm Ayman and they found her crying. Umm Ayman, why are you crying? She said, Wallahi, I'm not crying. Oh, he said to her, don't you know that what Allah has for his companion is better for him than this life? She said, yes, I'm not crying for that. I know that what Allah has for his prophet at the next life is better than this life. But I'm crying that by the death of the prophet, peace be with him, there was no more revelation that come from heaven to the earth. They used to live this kind of great favor. It used to be something really historical, unusual. That something happens on earth and they expect the revelation to come from Allah. To correct, to approve, to criticize. To prohibit, to allow. This itself was a great favor from Allah Almighty. So she encouraged them or she incited them to cry. And both Abu Bakr and Umar were crying for this great kind of loss. They did not only lose the Prophet, peace be with him. But they, but they cried also for something else. That they lost the revelation. This great grace that they used to enjoy in their life. That Allah Almighty sends an angel. Sends an angel to be, to give the revelation to the Prophet, peace be with him. Today, we still have that favor, brothers and sisters. We're still enjoying that favor. We still have the revelation. Yes, there is no more connection or revelation coming from the heaven to the earth. But we still have this favor. And it will be a great grace for us as long as we apply it and practice it. But it's going to be a great retaliation, a great a problem for us if we do not practice it. Let us ask Allah the Almighty to help us practice this great grace from Allah in order to be close with those whom Allah had bestowed his favor upon among prophets and siddiqeen, extremely believers and martyrs and righteous wa hasuna ula'ika rafiqa and this is the best, the best place to dwell in with the, with the prophets and with their companions. Thank you very much and be with us in our next episode, The Benefits. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.